Hey guys, today I'm going to show you Civilization V. This is really one of my favorite games of all time. Civilization in general. Uh, the fifth installment is great because for the first time in the whole series, you cannot stack units. Um, and I'll show you what I mean if you don't know the game. But basically the game is... Uh, I'm going to play it on a, just a continents, I guess. The game is basically hexagonally created, playing as the Babylonians. I want to give you guys a nice intro. It's, uh, they've added, like, religion, they've added tourism, you can have cultural victories. So, I'll explain the whole game. Civilization, the fifth installment. This is a Brave New World. There's two expansions, Gods and Kings and a Brave New World. Um, I highly recommend getting both. Well, as you can see, this is my settler, and this is my warrior. And when you play this game, you pretty much start out with a settler and a warrior when you're playing on the basic settings. Um, the settlers, when you right-click, they can move around, but their main job is to build cities. Uh, and this is a fantastic, usually when you start, they start your first settler on a great spot. It may be like one or two spots away from a great spot. Like here's a mountain, and later in the game I may want to be closer to this mountain. But I'm not too concerned, and so I'm going to settle right here because crossing this river is going to take too long. So these guys are going to build a city, and my first city is going to be Babylon because I'm playing as the Babylonians. That's the default name. I can change it at any time if I want. Now here's an opportunity for my warriors to go explore up into the mountains, into the jungle, and see what we have. Here we have ivory, ivory, stone, gold. There's some stone up there, some sheep, some cattle. All right, my first city, Babylon, is founded. This is a turn-based game, which means if you don't do anything, the game doesn't progress. Partly one of the reasons why I love this game so much because you can get up go take a piss You know go get some water take care of yourself and the game's waiting for you when you come back It also auto saves periodically which is handy in case something goes wrong while you're playing um, and the great thing about Civ 5 is It's really difficult to end your turn without Doing everything if you played the other games sometimes you may forget to do something and maybe end your turn but on this um, this button right here takes you to whatever you need to do next. So I found in my first city, and right here it shows that Babylon is not currently producing anything. So here I click on it, on choose production, and it will take me to Babylon, and I get to pick something that I want to produce. I want to produce a scout. I'm not saying I'm the best at this game, but I'm pretty good. There's a lot of difficulties. Um, I'm playing on Prince, which is like the middle difficulty. Uh, I can beat the game on King, which is a difficulty up from Prince, and higher than that, Emperor and beyond, it, it gets really difficult because the computer starts with massive advantages, like a lot of units, and, and it, they get, I think, happiness bonuses and things, or you don't get as many happiness bonuses. Anyway, I want to build a scout, and to start up the game, you're always going to be researching something. They start you off just after researching agriculture. Everybody has just researched agriculture. The agricultural revolution has planted humanity in its place. In the world, there are many other civilizations doing the same thing. 4000 BC. Uh, first thing I'm going to research is pottery. In fact, if you want, you can look at the uh, research tab. So basically that will be, where are we at here, I think? This is the Civilopedia, and if you ever have any questions about this game, you can click on this. I want to go to the research, not here, right here. This is how you will see what researching what will lead to what. And since I'm the Babylonians, one of their abilities is that when they figure out writing, 
they get a great scientist. Great people in this game are huge. You get great engineers, great scientists, great artists, great merchants, great generals, great admirals. Um, I think I'm leaving some out. Oh yeah, there's, there's great writers, all sorts of things, and you'll see them as the game progresses. But the Babylonians particularly are very research-oriented, and they want scientists, so I'm going for writing. Pottery leads to writing. Anyway, we need granaries. Um, but, so you take a look at this, and you see how it says ivory. When you mouse over it, it kind of pops up down in the bottom right above next turn. But it also requires trapping. What that means is, when you, when you mouse over something, it requires masonry. requires mining. That's a research. You need to get mining, you need to get masonry, and trapping to utilize these resources. Otherwise, they're just unworked. What you can do is build a worker. And once you have a worker built, the worker is going to move around and build these for you. He'll build a quarry here. He'll build a camp here for the elephants. But since it's early in the game, I want to get a scout so that I can start exploring my surroundings, know what I'm up against. Turn number two. Mountains are great. When you land on a mountain tile, a hill, how it says, plains, hill, terrain type, you get to see a little bit further. It does slow you down. Warriors, it slows down. Scouts, the, what I like about them is that they don't get slowed down by trees and they don't get slowed down by mountains and hills. Well, mountains, yes. No one can pass through mountains except for uh, one special unit, I believe, that belongs to the Polish. Um, but warriors and most units get stopped or they, it takes them two movements to uh, move through a plane, uh, uh, hill. And these guys only have two, so it ends their turn. Up here you see your research. Right now I'm producing four per turn. I'm producing three gold per turn. Uh, I have zero trade routes out of zero. I have five total happiness, which is giving me points towards my next golden age. Once I hit 335 points, I'll hit a golden age. You can get into the negative, and then this number will go down. I am building one culture per turn from my palace. Once I get to 15, I'll get my first social. Oops, not that fun. My first social policy. This is probably my favorite part of the game. Uh, culture leads you to building different socialized civilizations, depending on what you want to make. If you want to make a warlike society, you would go after honor. If you want to make a small society, well, small as in few cities, but large cities that are small, that are, you don't have as many of them. Tradition's great. Liberty's great for lots of cities. Piety's great for a religious empire. Here's religion. Right now I'm making zero out of zero faith, or zero faith, because I don't have anything religious going on. Uh, and for tourism, this is what you need for a cultural victory. Right now I'm not producing any tourism because it's so early in the game. What else we're we looking at? All these buttons. There's a lot. This is our cultural overview. This is when you start to build great works. Uh, things later. I'll just teach you about what I'm doing as I'm doing it. Early in the game, you can tend to click next turn a lot. Ancient ruins. These are big, and these are why I built scouts. Early in the game, it's basically a land grab. All the civilizations are out exploring, and you're going to come upon all sorts of ancient ruins from, you know, what are the uh, Sumerians? Oh, I found a natural wonder. These are great, too. If you build a city, Sripada. First of all, discovering one gives you one extra happiness per turn for the rest of the game. They're huge. They're great. They're wonderful to find. They are wonderful. Uh, and then if you found a city and it's within your borders, you get two food, four faith, and two happiness. That is a great thing to have in your city borders. My city borders, I mean these. So your city can only work the tiles that are within its cultural borders. And as your culture goes up, your borders will expand. Uh, the computer will pick uh, a spot for you. You can also buy tiles with gold, which is a great way to expand quickly. Right now, this is all I got.
Um, and let's continue. So these ruins I'm going to want. Ancient ruins are pretty much the cream of the crop of the Stone Age. We're into the agricultural age. Because they do things like this. Advanced weapons, which basically turns my warriors into spearmen. They found ancient spears. Now they are badass. And I just produced my scout, which took me four turns. As you can see here, this one shows the size of my city, which is one. How many turns until it grows to the next number, which is one more turn, and then it'll become a number two city. And I'm going to start building a monument. This gives you plus two culture per turn. Get my culture builder in faster so I can get social policies, which I'm a big fan of. See, and it says it's going to take five turns. So in five turns, uh, I'll have my monument built. And this scout is going to be able to head southwest to that ruins. Oh, son of a bitch, the Ottomans. Yeah. You know, when you first meet guys early in the game, or girls, there's just not much interaction you can do with them. There's nothing really to trade. Goodbye, Suleiman. Enjoy the spoils, you son of a bitch. So apparently Suleiman is close by. Question is now, do I slay him? Oh, I'm taking those ruins if I can. One of my favorite tactics with Babylon, and he's going after him too, is to found less cities. Oh, barbarians. Okay, there's a lot going on here, but fortunately this game is turn-based. First thing first. These ruins show me that there are barbarians to the south. Barbarians to the west. Of course, these barbarians. Barbarians can appear anywhere where the map is grayed out. This is what's called the fog of war. And so, like, literally right now, a barbarian camp could appear here, and then barbarians could start spawning. And, like, every ten turns or something, I don't know how many turns, but a barbarian will appear next to the camp. And these guys are just basically super aggressive. And they will attack any anyone that gets near them. They'll come towards your cities. They'll attack your cities. If you have workers that are working the planes, they'll capture your workers and take them. And the workers will start, they'll turn red, like this color. And then they'll start walking back to the barbarian camp slowly. And you'll have to go capture them back, or someone else might get it. Barbarians are a pain in the fucking ass, and I highly suggest slaughtering barbarians when you have the opportunity. And it looks like we've researched pottery, so I'm moving on to writing, as was my plan. So what you can see here, now that I've finished pottery, it opens up a few more buildings that I can build. I can build a shrine, and I can build a granary. Both are great cities, and particularly now I'm researching writing. Once I get writing, I'll be able to build a library. I'll also be able to build the Great Library. This is one of the ancient wonders of the world. One of the great things about civilization is that you can build wonders. And what that means is only one person, like right now I'm playing against six, to, there's five opponents, I think. There's six of us total, all computer players. Only one civilization can build great wonders. And the Great Library is fantastic. You get a free technology without having to research it. Like I can just get it. I don't have to spend the eight turns. It gives you a free library in the building. And it gives you two slots for great works of writing, which in once you start uh, developing a writer's guild and you start getting basically guilds, uh, see how this is an empty spot for a great work of art or artifact. You can start, these great people can make these great works of art and writing and music and things like that. And if you have space for them, i.e. if you have something with two slots for great writing, you can build a great work of writing and it sits in the city and produces culture and also can produce tourism, which later in the game can lead you to a cultural victory. There are several different ways to win in this game. You can win through culture, you can win through military, uh, you can win through diplomacy, you can win through science, basically by building a spaceship 
and launching off the planet before anyone else can. You can win by points if it gets to 2050 AD and you have the highest points, you win. And um, maybe, maybe missing something, but I think there's one other way to win also. I usually go for, you know, it's kind of systematic. You, you can only really go for what's available, but I, with these guys, like a technological victory would seem obvious because they're Babylon and they're good at technology. But I, I do really well with uh, diplomacy. And then again, I really only ever beat the game on King. So maybe I'm doing something wrong. So if you, if you spot it, you know, shout it out. The years progress. Oh, 60 years later. I want those ruins, but I, I have to take these barbarians out. I'm risking that some other civilization is going to appear and take those, but leaving barbarians unchecked is pretty much one of the worst things that can happen. Because they'll start coming at you hard. Oh, what I was going to say, one of my favorite things to do is to just build one city. And it seems kind of ridiculous because all this land and all these things, like, I, I really would be silly not to found a city over here, get all this ivory. But I like having one city because as you build more cities, the second number, the number that you need to get the next cultural ability increases. So if I have one city, it's only going to take me to 15. If I had two cities, it would take me to like 20 or 25. I would have to get 25 points to get culture. So it takes a lot longer to build your uh, national culture the more cities you have. So I really like playing with one city, making it super big, like the biggest city in the world, really well defended. But realistically, if you're up against an empire of like 20 cities and their military, and they wanna come attack you and you have one city, you're going to be in trouble. So, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. And there they are. The Turkish. So, here it says that I'm about to have a minor victory. It basically gives you a an idea of if you're going to win or lose, my approximate damage inflicted is 33. They're going to inflict 21 to me. Tells you why. Uh, I get a bonus against Barbarians, which is nice. They have a fortification bonus. Push on, friends. If I can take that camp, I get money, and they will stop spawning, which is a big deal, because I, the last thing I want is some Barbarian hordes coming from my west while I'm trying to peacefully farm the river. All right, my first promotion. Units become promoted as they gain experience. Here you see it's 54 out of 100 hit points. This is his experience, 10 out of 10. And I can choose one of three things to start it off. Uh, you can heal them instantly, which in a lot of ways is kind of a waste of a promotion because they don't get any long-term benefits from it. They just get healed. But if it's, if it's in a dire circumstance and you're about to lose your unit and you're surrounded... Um, healing them is the best option. Right now, though, since I don't seem to be in any peril, I'm going to give them the drill promotion. This gives them plus 15 attack. Basically, if they're defending in rough terrain, which is hills, forests, or jungles, or if they're attacking into a rough terrain, which this is not rough terrain that they're going to be attacking into, uh, sh that would be shock. This is when they get the bonus from fighting in open terrain. Even so... Yeah, you know what I think I am going to give him then? I'm going to give him a uh, shock. So he gets the bonus in open terrain. Barbarians are slain. Next. Some people... the er, I think the early game is... It's a lot like chess. The early game is super, super important. And I pretty much refined it to an art, but I always feel like I'm missing something. Like, 
I want to go after religion, but I need a worker and I want to get another settler to build another city. But if you build settlers, your city stops growing and then I'll, I'll still be small. Basically, you see this takes nine turns to build. The reason this worker takes nine turns to build is because I have five production and it takes 46 production total. So it's gonna take me, I guess, you would think it would take 10 turns, but it's only gonna take nine turns, I guess it rounds. The reason I have five production, let's go into Babylon and look. So I have two people in my city and in four turns, I'll have three people. Well, three, it'll be size three, size two right now, which means I'm allowed to work two of my tiles. In four turns off three, I'll be able to work three of my tiles. The computer automatically does it for you and picks what it thinks is the best. Usually that means what has the most food or the most of something. Like if this yellow is gold, orange is production, green is food. If you see blue, that's science. And then you can see faith, culture sometimes. Those are kind of rare for city tiles, but the main ones are these top three. And then sometimes you'll see science. If I get a great scientist, you'll see some science on the table. So right now, none of these have been worked. They're, they're, un, uh, they're unworked tiles, basically roaming free, but we're still getting some benefits from these. One production. I'm getting one production from my city. And what did it say? Uh, I get three production from my palace, I believe. Your capital starts with the palace, which gives you all this stuff. Everybody has that. So my five total production makes it so this worker is built in nine turns. As you get more production, like if I work these, if I get a quarry and work this stone, it'll give me another point of production. I'll be making six per turn and this would only take eight turns instead of nine. Or if I, you know, there's all, and then la la la, you can really get it going. Anyway, I've talked and talked and I'm going to build a shrine because I want some religion. Shrines are great. They give you one faith per turn. They cost one gold per turn. Most buildings cost one something, an upkeep of some sort. But the faith, it's good to get early. If you want a religious society of any kind, I highly suggest starting on a shrine as soon as possible. It accrues pretty quickly. Early in the game, there's a lot of ending your turn fast. So if, you, if you're building... Ah, another ruins. If you're building a shrine, it'll, uh... Treasures of an ancient empire. 70 gold? That will help early in the game, that's for sure. There's a lot of ending your turn, so you can accrue enough faith to get a pantheon pretty quickly. Oh, looks like I've uh, received my first natural wonder. Oh, look at that. Um, Mount Kailash. Sorry here, only one second.